Hey everybody, Rodaman here. Thanks for tuning in to Automation Empire. So where we left off, we were trying to streamline some of the uh, some of our um, factories here, so that we can hit the export necessary to unlock uh, the trains. That is the end goal, and that is still what I am working towards. So right now I am, oops, we missed one. Adding in some additional gold mining into the new gold mine rails, uh, which should allow for the export, the increased speed of export over here. Uh, now this isn't necessarily the uh, most streamlined design. It's just, um, I would say cost inefficient to bother redesigning uh, what I've got going on now. So instead of redesigning it, I am just going to roll with it. Now, other ways to do it is to have a giant central... Well, let me claim this. A giant central factory that processes all your materials. That's another way and just bring all the materials inwards. Uh, so let's take a look. We would... We have enough to unlock the combiner here. Um, that's going to be pretty essential in terms of uh, being able to unlock the freight train. And the freight train is the eventual goal. So the combiner unlocks at 6K, the freight train at 8K. So the goal is to try to get, uh, start to manufacture steel plates, which requires a combiner, which means uh, cranking out some additional research. And then additionally, um, after we have that uh, unlock the freight train. But the thing is, I don't have too many more of these episodes to go. I'm just going to be uh, very blunt about that. Um... This is a mini-series, and I don't intend to see it to its end, unfortunately. So, with that said, uh, there will only be so many episodes of this left. Probably just about two. Alright, so I'm just sort of watching the efficiency of this train here. Making sure that it is running how I'd want it to. I think we're going to need some additional rail and track. Oh, we're, we're only going to need two of those. Oh, all three. Never mind. Take it back. Okay. And with these two running, uh, we should be able to uh, start ramping our export back up. So right now we're at about just shy of 6k and with the additional goal being added to the containers here we should get that back up uh, soon I hope I may have to spread things out and add some additional storage here as well now there is another thing that I could do is to have one track circle the resources and pile it all into one big container and then have another train car bring that from that big container over to um, the factory and that would uh, make it so that the the mining towers didn't uh, max out on content so that might be something I uh, one change I make but if the containers here can take all of the all of the um, here, let me reverse that real quick we didn't and empty that last one all the contents uh, then it doesn't really matter as long as there's still space for the storage and here we go as you can see it's being cranked out now another thing I need to do is to pluck some gold and start researching the gold in my uh, research bays uh, that's something else I'm going to have to do. Or, additionally, just add a dedicated research bay for the gold. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go ahead and redesign the tracks here so that we store all of the gold into central storage. So I'm going to put a large container here. And I am going to destroy some of these rails 
It will look a little bit cleaner, I think, maybe. Oops. Eh, I guess that doesn't really matter. In fact, I should purposely cut the power there because uh, I don't want to be paying for any of these drills to be running while I make these uh, up updates. Okay, so now we are going to, I'm going to redo all the rails here. And this is in order for this to be more efficient. I actually don't think I'm going to get my returns on investment. And by that, I mean, I don't think the, thanks, giant saved message. I don't think the amount of effort this takes is going to warrant doing. But I'm going to do it anyway, because this was a suggestion I saw. All right, so the idea here is to have one train. Go around and collect all the material that we'll want to scoop. And we'll put this on the inside track. And this way, the mining uh, towers should not fill up. And in fact, what I might do is have two tracks. And I'm going to do that. Just nice and short. All right, so this is going to be one of the loops. All right, so one of the loops goes like this. These still are necessary. We, we still want to pull resources that way. Okay. And then it's gonna look something like this. All right, that's one loop, and the materials from this are going to go into the container. And then uh, let me just construct the other loop real quick. Not too, too fancy. And there's the other loop. And then we'll just add in as many train cars as required so that is to not uh, have these towers fill up. Basically, one loop allows us to grab all the materials. I'll start with eight and see where that takes us. And then these train cars, which feed the factory, are going to have their own sort of deal here. Um, okay, this is going to be in the way. So we'll fix that. All right, so this tower here, and this should speed up uh, how long it takes to feed the factory, hopefully. Because you have one train set on collection and the other set on um, all right, six to one. And obviously, I could change the height of this track eventually um, so that it is uh, a 
running a little bit faster. Let me do that now. Now at height two is pretty much when you get all the speed benefit. There's really no point in going to height three, I don't think. There's so much, there's so many little features about this game that I'm like, uh, but they should have, but it doesn't exist. Although it's very much in development, so that might change. All right, so now you can see how it all loops. And then the carts don't have to cover the same amount of distance. And we have plenty of storage. Now right now, my um, my export should be low. Oh, actually, it's not that low. And my record's getting pretty close to trains. Which means uh, what I really need to do is... Uh, make sure I start plucking gold. So I'm going to pl pluck gold from both sides here. And we'll put this. I'm going to have it grab all the gold. And this gold will go into a storage container. That's too far. Hmm. A little bit out of room. All right, let me move this around a little bit. Storage container back here. And then I can convey it. And now this container will fill up with processed gold. Destroy the crates when we're done with them. Alright, this gets nice and full, and then that will, you know the drill, deposit out to a rail line which then takes the gold somewhere good. Somewhere where you can do research on it. Um, but that's gonna have to... Oof, I keep... Oh, keep messing up and moving everything. All right, so let's do the rail line first, because that's the fussiest part of this equation. All right, that's too far. Forget the curves. We'll just have it be a straight run like this. So there's one. And two. Not the most elegant ever, but it'll have to do. And then this rail will, uh, this well will bring it over here. 
and I'm going to feed it to the last two um, rail cars. Like this. This will be ugly. But it's okay. Oh boy, how ugly is this going to be? I'm going to make this super ugly. Just embrace the Uggs. <laughs> well, I gotta admit, I've got an ugly factory, but I am enjoying myself, so that counts for something. Alright, so there's a telephone pole in the way. And... Comes around the corner. Goes up. Goes up. We're looking good. And then the gold gets fed. And the gold allows me to work towards a freight train, although I still need the steel plates, which requires a combiner. So the combiner requires me to have about uh, 77k more research. And that's what I'm working on. So how's this system working? Looks like we need to be moving more material. I'll kick this up to 12. And a little longer like that. I'm going to have to turn this train around. Reverse directions. There. Now the real thing that I'm interested in is, yes, these should not be nearing max capacity. Um, so it looks like one circle, circuit eight, eight seems to be enough more than enough I'm just I'll leave it at eight just to make sure all right so these tracks are a little bit longer and gold should be flowing and it is this crazy squid like network now let's see if I can actually get this to fill up. I 
I can start fine-tuning the length of track that I need. So my gold containers are looking like they're getting full. But uh, not anything else. There we go. If I have to add some additional um, research, that's fine. I can also make it so that this track goes a little bit longer as well. Perfect. Perfect length. Grabbed almost all of the material. And this actually filled up. Having it be full is a good thing. It means that... Um, means that we're basically cranking out as much as we can. But my... Oh, my record three month is over 8k. So that means I'm in train territory. I just need to start processing steel plates and gold. And the steel plates are waiting for more research. But as you can see here, the research I'm getting for, from gold uh, worth a whole lot more than the other... Uh, the other such materials. All right, well, that's working out. I am making money hand over fist, that's for sure. All right, so far, that Moncar has been able to supply everything I need, but that might not remain to be true. I'm going to make this uh, a little bit longer of a run. So we can have some additional mine cars on the track and carry some more gold as a result because this thing is filling up pretty good. And that will allow even more research. I'm sure you saw that coming. All right, there we go. Uh, so we are waiting on 70-ish thousand, 77. So I'm not going to bother claiming any research until I've hit the required amount. So this should just about empty out this bucket. Of course, I can have these skip too. That's uh, alternative as well, so I can have them skip every one. In fact, all of these arms should be skipping just every single. Rather than the way I had set them up. And that was uh, LTL suggestion. Wow, look at the coal that I've got. Definitely maxing out there. And the iron. Looking pretty healthy as well. So I think I'm almost at the amount of research that I can claim. Oh yeah, there we go. and unlock the combiner. So the combiner allows you to combine iron and coal, uh, processed iron and coal into, well, okay, no. The combiner really allows you to combine all these recipes, so iron and coal into steel plates, 
iron and gold into capacitors, so on and so forth, um, which is very, very useful for me to get steel plates. Uh, the issue here, however, is if I really want to use the combiner properly, um, I'm going to be nuking a really high percentage of my factories. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. But uh, this is kind of amount of destruction is extreme, obviously. This also allows me to redesign things more intelligently if I so choose. So I think the important thing for me to do right now is um, I'm just going to break down all the old coal and iron. Oops, I just broke down my um, my gold deliveries. That was not what I was trying to do. It's going to be really easy to break the wrong things here. And the advantage of steel is it's worth more than iron and coal on its own. It's also required for the freight train. And it allows me to redesign older things better, uh, more intelligently. So I purposely killed the power there. The reason being, when you start off this game, you're a little resource starved, right? You don't have a lot of money. So the net result is a lot of the factory layouts that you have aren't ideal. They're just cheap. And cheap is fine. Cheap is great. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to knock cheap. But the uh, ultimately the issue is, yeah, it's cheap, but um, you could do it better later. Uh, the thing with the YouTube series, uh, really lengthy redesigns aren't always super interesting to watch. I know that much. Um, so I'm just mostly concerned about showing fundamental game mechanics and not the continual redesign to become uh, faster, smarter, more efficient, etc. I'm just not concerned about that aspect uh, because I'm trying to this should be entertaining more than anything else. So um, let's go ahead and move some of these transformers over. Making sure we have enough power. I don't really care if this gets powered off because we are scrapping most of it. Now I'm going to try to leave the gold line in there. So we don't really need to nuke the, the, the gold production. But what I need to do is redesign the uh, telephone poles that brings power over to the research. So right now we're feeding it resources, but we're not doing anything with those resources. I also have two million to reinvest. So one of the uh, one of the original issues that I had designing these factories is I didn't want a giant floor print for the factory because um, that's expensive, and I didn't want to tie up my capital in things like expansive floor prints. Right? <laughs> I love that rail. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Float, float rail, float. Uh, but now that's obviously not the case. You know, I've got plenty of money. I can have a nice, spacious floor print, and uh, that's obviously not going to be an issue. All right, so these research stations are back on. Um, now, utilizing uh, some of the design ideas that we had from before, uh, what we're going to want to do is to collect resources on a run and deposit them. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is to have some train systems, let me get rid of this, some train systems, I'm going to scale this up eventually, uh, but have train systems run around their own individual islands, 
And only here, here we have uh, uh, coal and iron. We'll bring these straight into the factory. So I'm going to do a really large factory. One that uh, probably is way larger than it needs to be. And here's what I'm going to do. I want to bring in coal and iron into this factory. And this will be a giant steel mill. Something like that. The idea is to be able to um, bring a whole lot of resources, right? So what, 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 what I want is multiple uh, resource intakes so that we can have a bunch of different little tracks all bring the resources in. Uh, but just to get the ball rolling, just to start to get steel production going, I need, uh, I need to grab the resources locally. And that should... That sh this sh this should be, you know, this should work. Because I would like to show combiner before the end of this, ideally. All right, so we're going to have iron on this left one and coal on the right. So we'll just say this takes iron ore. And this takes coal ore, because that's exactly what it will be. I'm going to power this on. I'm not even going to have it be elevated track. And pretty, pretty straightforward, right? Uh, so, combiner, where are you? We unlocked you. Uh, the way this combiner works is pretty straightforward. It just uh, acts pretty much exactly. Um, well, I'll just read it. Combines together two resources, creating a resource in the process. Uh, takes in resources from the side ports, outputs the final product in the front port, must be in a factory. It's really not all that complicated. Uh, so one way to do this, oddly, I'll grant you, is to instantaneously move resources amongst these. This also adds storage. Uh, these transfer tubes aren't necessarily directional. Um... All right, now we have a combiner. Uh, we could, I'm just going to lay out a combiner like this. I'm going to probably lay out a whole bunch of combiners, uh, but I'll lay out the first one as a prototype. And this, oh, actually, so if you take a look at the recipe list, this only takes processed stuff, right? The combiner requires processed iron, processed coal. So, uh, first off, we need to process these, um, which means something like a crate maker, right? So, I'm going to crate make to refine. Actually, I'm going to get rid of some of these. Free up a little bit of space. So, here's the first crate maker. And then refinery. Looks like this. I guess I can power these on now, even though they're not currently doing anything. My power grid's like, what? Don't worry about it. All right. Transfer tube. And... And refineries. 
And then at the end of this, uh, we are going to want to put this all right back in storage, funny enough, right? Um... So what I'm going to do is oops, something like this. This might not be efficient enough, but this is one way for it to work. Let's have all these come out on conveyors. This corner did not work. Come on, corner. Quit freezing. And then it sends all of the uh, processed material right back into storage. The only issue is it can get backed up, uh, but I'm curious if it actually processes through its backup. Um, all right, and we'll do the same exact over here. Nice and symmetrical. Now, this doesn't have a lot of room to scale out to add new crate makers, so that would be one problem of this current layout. Uh, I'd want to lay it out a little bit differently, but this is just proof of concept more than anything else for the combiner. So it doesn't get backed up as easy. So now we'll have processed coal and processed iron. And then what you're going to want to do is to send it all. So one weird way to send it would be like this. No, that doesn't fit correctly. Almost, right? Okay, fine. I'll do it the slightly harder way. So you could use rail cars to do this. You could use a bunch of different ways. I'm going to do rail cars because I'm going to have it be weird. Um... Sometimes I like weird. This is not a smart way of going about it. Uh, it's just a, you know, proof of concept way. Uh, where is the, here it is, the combiner. Then out the transfer tube as you can see is my plates or instead I could just stick that into storage 
And now, as you can see, there are still plates being processed. And if I wanted to accelerate this, uh, I could just add more combiners. And the idea is eventually to process enough steel plates to unlock freight train, which dramatically increases the amount of uh, research output you can total have. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get there all the way because uh, this series is going to come to end before I do that project. But um, I wanted to just say thank you to everybody that have supported the series. Uh, I would like, I'm sort of introducing the concept of miniseries into my YouTube channel so that I can cover more games, uh, just the sort of um, starting interesting bits, getting you enticed. Um, not that it really acts as a full review, because it shouldn't be considered as a full review. I'm not fully reviewing these games, I'm not giving them a score or anything like that. Um, but it will allow you to be informed about what a game is like before you go ahead and buy it. Um, so, with that in mind, if you have game suggestions for me, my Discord channel is always a place to go to drop your suggestions. And I do have two or three games in the pipe that I already know I'm going to do in the next uh, few mini-series. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, maybe it would be possible to catch more of this in Twitch streams in the future, if you all vote for it. Adios all.